5 Reasons Not to Go Back to the Philippines Are you thinking about moving back to the Philippines? That is a big decision, especially if you've been living in Canada for a long time. The idea of returning home is exciting. The familiar faces, the warm weather. But before you pack your bags, there are some important things to think about. Based on our 6-year experience of living back in the Philippines, we've seen some challenges that might make you reconsider. Here are 5 reasons you might want to think twice before making the move. First reason is high cost of living. According to Nambeo, the cost of living in Manila is about 34% lower than Toronto. Pero, hindi nito finactor ang kalidad ng mga products at services. At first, it seems like the cost of living in the Philippines is lower. Totoo nga na mas murang mga sariwang prutas at gulay at local transportation. Pero, when you add everything up, especially for a family, mapapalaki din ang gastos po. For example, ang imported goods are much more expensive in the Philippines. Kung nasanay ka na sa mga produktong imported, be ready to pay more. Let's say if you want to buy your favorite cereal or coffee from Canada, be ready to pay double or triple the price. Halimbawa, ang isang box ng imported cereal na nagkakahalaga ng $5 sa Canada, if you convert that, that is around 200 pesos. Sa Pilipinas, ito ay maaring umabot ng 500 pesos or more. Another big expense is education. Ang mga international schools para sa mga bata ay sobrang mahal. Many expats choose this schools for good education. Pero, handa ka bang magbayad ng libu-libong piso bawat buwan? Tuition fees at international schools can range from 200,000 pesos to 1 million pesos per year, depende sa eskwelahan at grade level ng bata. However, private schools in the provinces are not that expensive as the ones in Manila. Sa Canada, ang public education ay libre. Kaya, malaking adjustment ito sa budget ng family if you decide to move back to the Philippines. Healthcare is another major cost. Although may mga murang hospital at clinics, iba pa rin ang quality ng service sa mga kilalang private hospitals. At ito ay may mga kamahalan. A simple check-up sa isang kilalang private hospital can range between 1,500 to 3,000 pesos. Hindi pa kasama ang mga tests at gamot. In the province naman, doctor's fees vary depending on their specialty. Check-up would cost between 300 pesos to 500 pesos, not including the tests and medications. In Canada, the public healthcare system covers many medical expenses. Second reason not to move back to the Philippines is traffic and poor transportation. Isa ito sa matagal ng problema na hindi masolve-solve ng government, ang traffic. In fact, just recently, Metro Manila traffic was so bad that it calls for state of calamity. Traffic congestion is a daily struggle in major cities like Manila and Cebu. Imagine spending hours just sitting in your car or jeepney na halos hindi gumagalaw. Kapag umuulan, lalong tumitindi ang traffic. Ang mga kalsada ay nababaha at ang mga jeepney at bus ay lalong bumabagal. Minsan, ang biyahe na isang oras lang ay nagiging tatlo. Maraming kalsada ang lubak-lubak at hindi maayos. May mga road repairs na ang tagal-tagal gawin. Minsan nga, ang mga matitinong kalsada ay sinisira nila. Saan ka makakakita ng ganun? Kaya tuloy, hindi maayos-ayos ang problema sa traffic. Public transportation options are limited and often unreliable. Ang mga jeepney at buses ay luma na at siksikan. Habang ang MRT naman ay madalas na puno, nasisira at late. Hindi sa naninira ako, no? Pero I've seen it, I've experienced it, and I will never want to experience it again. Kayo, kabayan, na-experience mo na rin ba yon? Malamang, pag uuwi kayo ng Pilipinas, you prefer to have a car for easier transportation. But, of course, you will need to consider a space for parking and brave yourself in facing small, narrow roads and drivers with no discipline. I remember the first time I went back to the Philippines, I didn't want to drive kasi parang ang liit-liit ng kalsada. Yung one way sa Canada, two way sa Pilipinas. Paano mo pagkakasyahin ang sasakyan sa sobrang sikip? Idagdag mo pa ang mga walang disiplinang mga driver. Sul 
sulpot ng sulpot kung saan saan. Stress lang ang aabutin mo. However, there are also options if you stay in Manila and don't want to drive or have a car. You can just use Grab or taxi to go around. However, you can't skip traffic. Default yan pag nasa Manila ka. Next reason not to move back to the Philippines is poor healthcare system. While there are excellent doctors and hospitals in the Philippines, the overall healthcare system can be inconsistent. Makakakita ka ng mga world-class hospitals sa mga major cities, pero iba ang karanasan sa mga probinsya. Access to quality healthcare, especially in rural areas, is limited. Kung nasa malalayong lugar ka, madalas kailangan mo pang bumiyahe ng how many hours para makarating sa pinakamalapit na malaking hospital. The healthcare facilities in rural areas often lack advanced equipment and specialized doctors, which can be a problem in emergency situations. If you live in Manila and need a specialist, you might find one easily in hospitals like St. Luke's or Makati Medical Center. Pero kung nasa probinsya ka, baka kailangan mo pang pumunta sa Manila para lang makapagpa-check up sa mga espesyalista. Sa mga emergency situations like heart attack or major accidents, very important ang mabilis na medical response. Sa mga major cities, mabilis makakarating ang mga ambulance at may mga advanced facilities sila. Pero sa rural areas, ibang kwento. Kadalasan ang mga ambulansya ay luma at ang mga hospital ay kulang-kulang sa mga kagamitan. Maraming tao sa Pilipinas ang hindi regular na nagpapa-check up dahil sa cost at kakulangan ng access. This can lead to late detection of serious illnesses. Next reason not to go back to the Philippines is safety and security concerns. While many areas in the Philippines are safe, there are regions with higher crime rates and issues like political instability. Maraming lugar ang tahimik at ligtas, pero may mga lugar din na mga delikado. In Metro Manila, while many areas are generally safe, there are still hotspots for petty crimes like snatching and pickpocketing. Sa mga crowded places gaya ng Divisoria at Quiapo, kailangan laging mag-ingat. Sa Mindanao naman, may mga lugar na apektado ng insurgencies at political conflicts. It's important to be aware of these areas, lalo na kung may balak kang mag-travel or live there. In Canada, walking alone at night is generally safe in most areas. Sa Pilipinas, you need to be alert and careful, lalo na sa mga lugar na hindi mo kabisado. Next reason is limited job opportunities. Finding jobs that match your skills and pay well can be challenging. Maraming skilled workers ang nahihirapang makahanap ng trabaho based on their qualifications. Many Filipinos returning from abroad struggle to find employment that offers the same benefits and salary as they had in other countries. For example, if you are an engineer or a nurse abroad, baka mahirapan kang makahanap ng trabaho sa Pilipinas na may parehong benefits at sahod. Maraming mga professionals ang nag a adjust sa mga mababang salary at mas kakaunting benefits. Limited din ang mga opportunities for career advancement and professional development, lalo na kung nasa probinsya ka. That explains why a lot of Filipinos want to go abroad. It is because of these reasons. Now, maraming mga Pilipino na bumabalik daling abroad ang nagnenegosyo na lang. Pero, hindi rin ito madali dahil may mga challenges. Gaya ng high operational cost, walang experience or knowledge sa pagnenegosyo bureaucracy, at competition. Deciding whether to move back to the Philippines is a deeply personal choice. It's not just about comparing numbers or listing pros and cons. It's about understanding what will make you and your family happy and fulfilled. While there are challenges like the high cost of living, traffic, and limited job opportunities, there are also many rewards to living in our beautiful home country. You can't put a price on the warmth of being close to to family and friends, or the joy of experiencing our rich culture and traditions every day. Imagine your kids growing up knowing their cousins, celebrating fiestas, and speaking both English and Tagalog fluently. Consider these points carefully, weigh your options, and choose what's best for your family's unique situation. Think about your long-term goals, your career, your children's education, and your overall quality of life. Visit the Philippines first and see if the life lifestyle suits your family. Talk to other families
those who have made the move and learn from their experiences. Remember, every family's journey is different. What works for one family may not work for another. Some may find a sense of community and slower pace of life in the Philippines to be exactly what they need, while others may miss the convenience and opportunities available abroad. Ultimately, the decision is yours to make. Listen to your heart and your instincts. Gather all the information you can. Talk to people who have been through it and weigh all the pros and cons. Think about what truly matters to you and your loved ones. Share this video to your friends and family. Leave a like and subscribe for more videos. Now, if you want to learn why people are leaving Canada, check this video next.